just worship God. Jesus, we are grateful tonight. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you because they are bound forever. We are grateful. We are grateful, Jesus. We are grateful. Thank you for this opportunity to gather again at your feet. We give you all the praise, Lord. We ask that tonight you will indeed speak through this young man and reach out to every person here tonight. In the name of Jesus, let this weekend be one of encounter. Let it be one of transformation. Let it be one of edification. In the name of Jesus. We pray for those that might still be on their way or that plan to join us tomorrow. We ask that you grant us our safe journey in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to take time out to say hello to someone. You know, you're welcome. Good evening. Nice seeing you. There are quite uh, new faces in our midst. And I just want to say welcome to you. There were some people that we came together. I had to 
be very silent on purpose trying to save some strength but I know that the Lord Jesus is my strength tonight hallelujah I want you to know that there is something that God is doing in this season and the truth is we'll keep on echoing the Lord's intentions so that people can hear more and more amen I strongly believe that the year 2020 was a year that signaled a shift globally and I felt that in order to let the world know that there was a shift God caused something that captured the globe to happen it was in 2020 that was the first time that we had what we can call a global lockdown am i correct it made us see that the world is almost a global village that every part you were in the world something can reach you are you following me and at that moment people who had lived long they saw what they had never seen in their life. I remember my biological father talking about, I've never seen this happen before. And um, I strongly believe that the reason why 2020 was that way was because God was trying to sound an alarm. Hallelujah that we are entering the last of the last days hallelujah and if you are a good student of god's word you understand that the end time or the end of the age is not something that god plans that believers should be afraid about but can i actually tell you the intention of god is that in that time of that age his sons will be reviewed glory to god his sons will be reviewed and you see, that's why we are here this weekend. So that God can begin to quicken our years onto the utterances that can prepare us for the times that we are entering as the whole earth. Hallelujah. So I want to beg on you, you might hear some things new. And for some of us, you might hear things that you are familiar with. But I just want to beg you to be like a Berean Christian. Take those things to your heart and set them over in the word of God. Amen. The times that we are entering, that we are advancing towards, is what I will call in my own way, the day of God. Hallelujah. The day of what? Of God. Because the scripture tells us that the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to who? To the sons of men. So we understand that as men, we have jurisdiction over the earth. But you see, in the day of God, let me use anything to explain what I want to explain. If you have ever lived in a rented apartment before, you would, might not see your landlord frequently. Are you listening to me? Especially when the apartment doesn't have a space for the landlord. You get what I'm saying? You are living in a place where it looks like your house. I don't know how many of us have that kind of place. Your landlord does not stay there. So it's like a three bedroom apartment, or maybe even four or two, depending on what it is. And anytime people come to visit, they say, who is in this house? Is you? They can't meet someone else. So to those that don't know the story behind everything, the owner of the house is actually rude to them. You, the re person renting the apartment, is that not so? And because when they enter your house, the pictures they will see will not be the landlord. Are you following? It will be your picture. It's because it's your house. It has been leased to you by money. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But you see, there can come a time when if the year rent is about to end, then suddenly your landlord now remembers 
that there is what? An apartment that belongs to what? To him. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, when it's about a week, two, a month, two months, the visit becomes more frequent. I was just passing by, I felt, let me just say hello to you. <coughs> Hallelujah. But you know that that hello is just a reminder that November is here. Are you getting it? Uh, November is at the corner. And if, after all the old G's, they ask after your family, your children, your friends, and they ask, remember I'm born. The mark back is up. Hallelujah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, what the landlord is trying to tell me is that at the end of every year, this house is my own. Hello. And that the only way you can continue in that house is when you play your deal. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So we say the day of God is a moment when God comes to show that actually I am still the ruler in the affairs of men. Even though I've given the earth to the sons of men and I've said the heaven and the heavens belong to me. And there are moments when God shows face to remind men are you following That actually this earth is my own. I only gave you authority. Glory to God. And you see, because of how frail in thinking the man is, we need reminders. Are you following me? We need reminders. Because oftentimes, men forget that the earth is the Lord. And what? And the fullness thereof. Glory to God. Because right now, there is a movement on the globe. And I know many of you here are planning to travel. God will make your peace and go well. Hallelujah. That those nations that you are planning to go to, they are forgotten that the earth is the Lord's. And what? And the fullness thereof. So they are saying we are the possessor of the earth. Any problem that mankind has is in our hand. And science is the way in which we solve everything. So in 2020, God had to do something that science did not have answered to. Are you following me? Before they said they could get a vaccine in 2020, millions had died. That was a dress rehearsal. Just to remind us that the owner, hallelujah, of all things is still the owner. And it's high time that men begin to embrace the word of God so that the one that lives in the heaven will not smite them when he comes. You know what that scripture says in the psalm? It says, kiss the son, lest he be what? He be angry. You see, that's the language of heaven now. Because in this end time, it will not be about the denomination you attend. It will not even be about the fellowship you attend. It will be whether you are a son of God. And the book of Daniel was a type to show us that in that book, there was no mention of any tribe. Have you noticed? If you are a good student of God, so they didn't mention any tribe in Daniel. They only, in fact, they were not called by their name. They were called what? Shedrach, Meshach, and what? And Abednego. They forgot their names. They were bearing another name. Daniel had, they had to say, him that is called Bethsaida. Just remind us that this is this person we are talking about. In this end of the age, it won't be about the number of followers that we have. It will be about those that are really working with Jesus. And you see, either you like it or not, rain will fall, flood will come. But you see, the house that will not fall is the one founded upon what? Upon the rock. Because there, there is a house now. There, there are many houses. Are you listening to me? There are many houses. But you see, when the flood comes, it comes to reveal what is the foundation here? And I pray as we advance this weekend, you will make a decision not to be religious, but to walk with him in the name of Jesus. And can I tell you, there are teachings now that God is releasing in quiet places. This is not planned. But I just feel let me tell you something. 
if you attend meetings, you must be able to discern the prepared message and the giving message. But I stop at that point. The prepared is the one that the minister has planned and says, well, this is what the Lord has put in our spiritual knowledge. But the giving message is the one that comes on you. And what I'm doing is just what you are And I'm telling you that God now is releasing some teachings in quiet places because he knows that the mainstream churches now are not ready for it. But you see, the fact that we are not ready for it does not mean that people will not be prepared. Are you listening to me? I say this by God. The times ahead will show those that know him and those that do not know him. That you know God is not because you attend church on Sundays. It's that day that will show you the truth. Are you following me? And I can tell you that that season we are entering it more. And you see, in these quiet places, God is trying to prepare a remnant. And what God is trying to do is to fashion what he wants now in the church in a remnant. Are you following? So that through those remnants, the present generation of Christians can be able to receive it. Do you know why they will have to receive it? Because of the things that will be happening. And you see, what I've seen in every hour is that people go to places where they are answered. Because in the days ahead, it will not be about if there's air condition. It will be about if you have an answer. Hello. You know, I was once talking to a colleague and I said, there is a problem now for the grassroots pastor. He said, what do you mean, sir? I said, because the grassroots pastor now, people cannot like his church. Because he doesn't have money to ensure that there's AC, that there's light that will be blinking. In fact, it was recently I saw that now there are some churches that look like cinema. You don't get it. The congregation is sitting in darkness and there's light on this thing. I'm like, Lord, this is wow. Are you following? Wow. <laughs> but you see, in the day of God, it's not be by the light that, but by the light that, is, that, what, that shines through us. The church went on lockdown. It was a parable that a kind of church is ending. Many of us now go used to online service. Whereas we were not saved online. So it's clear that there has to arise a generation that is not afraid of what works by day. Nor the noisome pestilence that crawls what at night. That even if there's something that has broken out in the land, the, the Lord is their anchor. The Lord is their what? Their place of safety. Are you listening to me? A people that when death sees death runs, not that they run from death. Because when you understand that COVID is one of the stings of death, you will you will not run again. I know some of us have come from different places in this southwest, and I want to beg you find a house of the bread of the season. Hello? See, don't be happy that you come, go to church and you come back, and it's only a selfie you have to show for it. Hello? Jean Sunday, awesome Sunday. And yet, no block of the spirit, no stone of God was laid in your heart. It should not be normal for us to come back from service and our heart is not body. That there is no push to walk closer with Jesus. You leave church and it's a shaker you are listening to. It's clear that there was no God that you had. That means that God cannot even keep a shaker from you for a day. Hey, last Sonia what did you encounter? Nuruddin or Yahweh? Because those that encountered, they said they came back and their face 
was a radiant. Only your makeup you see. Have you gone for meetings and you can't hit again? I'm telling you, you must look for that kind of church now. That you come back and you need to pray for two hours before you can eat. You know why? Because the word you heard in that service was like fire. Are you listening to me? Was like fire. It should be normal because the status quo of the word of God is fire. So when you are there and the salmon is a tranquilizer, it's a sign that you are in the wrong place. It's a house of sleep, not the house of God. If half of the members are asleep, or they're on Instagram. I'll never forget attending a church in this. And on my road, only me was listening to the pastor. Every other person was on Twitter. Every other person was on Facebook. Every other person was on WhatsApp and Instagram. And the pastor, when he's talking to his colleague, that is probably a pastor and eight, eight member church. I just finished talking to three of them. How many people listen? Hello? You know I'm talking this way. The time is getting short. And we need to get more serious. Make up your mind. And one of the things I'm trusting God that this weekend will do is that doors will be open to you. I know the kind of doors they've told in your church. But the door I'm talking about is a door to the things of the Spirit. Are you following me? You see, the days ahead cannot meet us like this. Where sleep is still Lord over you and not Lord over sleep. Where sickness can dictate to you and you cannot dictate to sickness. Where you have not beaten our body under. There's a cry. I don't want my life to waste. Imagine you sat in church all your life but were never prepared. Is that not something wrong? And you know what? I don't even blame some pastors. I blame the congregation. We like it like that. Hello? We like it like that. And that's it. We like it what? Comfort is a big enemy. We must be ready to be stretched. We must be ready to do beyond the usual. And God helping me and helping you, we will do more than usual. In the name of Jesus. So that in the days ahead, we'll be prepared people. We'll be people that have answers. God sent famine to the world. But there was a prepared Joseph that planned for that hour to ensure that his household will have bread in the day of famine. Can we cry to God for one minute before we start the message? You can know something that your pastor does not know. You can know something that your father does not know. But it's the only ghost that taught you that thing. In this hour, God is looking for men that will come to the secret place and they will be taught of the Lord. Because, can I tell you, the men churches will remain that way they are set in that way but God is looking for a generation that can be pliable that can come to eat 
Sabale Kamanoma La Bela Kataba Leprato Sabrana Makamba Lata Papo Sianta Bela Kapala Jesus help us Grant us access let every person that has gathered again this weekend let there be greater access oh god a deeper place a deeper place oh my show me your way Show me your way, oh. oh Lord. Lord, show us your way. That we also might walk in places that can change us, that can cause us to be transformed and not look like men of the earth. Help us, Lord. That's our cry this weekend. That we can fellowship in deeper waters. Take us away from shallow places. Take us away from shallow places. Bring us to a deeper place. That we may come unto the things that are deep. That we also might be deep. That we also might be strong, oh God, by your spirit. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the praise. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we are praying. That's my prayer for you. All of us have access to God. But not all of us fellowship at the same place. Are you listening to me? And what a meeting should do to you is to cause you to go deeper. Is to cause you to go deeper. That's what a gathering should do to you. You should have more hunger after this weekend. You should have more thirst. That's the plan of God. That anytime we come to church, we should be more hungry for him. Because we saw something we have not seen before. Are you listening to me? And you see, every manifestation of God is to bring us deeper. Are you listening to 